Liberal Viewer presents. So Fox News has been hyping this idea of a war on Christmas for years, which I've documented in several past videos, and this year has been no different, with Fox News already giving days of coverage to a story trying to claim Christians are under attack for just having to follow the same rules as everyone else, and even framing as a victory for atheists a judge's decision preventing Christians, Jews, and atheists equally from putting up unattended displays in a Southern California park as you can see from the story teaser in this clip. Well, the atheists won. That's what the lawyer for a Christian group said after a judge upholds the city's decision to ban a six-decade tradition of displaying nativity scenes. The emotional reaction from Santa Monica coming up. <laughs> now, again, this city ordinance and the judge's order upholding it didn't ban nativity scenes, but actually disallowed all unattended displays in Palisades Park. But Fox News, of course, kept calling it a nativity scene ban, and dismiss the rights of the non-Christians, as you can see in this clip. Santa Monica's Palisades Park, right on the ocean, had hosted a giant nativity scene, as you mentioned, for a long time. Since 1953, it was a tradition that went on without controversy until a few years ago, when an atheist decided to apply for a permit to put up an anti-religious display. Then the man got others to apply to the city for display permits, all of them for made up causes. And eventually the city says that it was inundated with permit requests and the expenses that went along with it, which is why the decision was made to ban all of them, period. Now, even though he eventually admitted this ruling affected Christian and non-Christian speech equally, did you catch the part where supposedly straight news anchor Rick Fulbaum characterized the displays from the atheists as being all for made-up causes? That's quite the spin given the other displays were for religion, the most quintessential of made-up causes, but the real misinformation from Fox News on the Santa Monica case came in the many stories in which Fox News brought on lawyers to seriously mischaracterized both the facts and the law of the case, which was especially clear to me being a lawyer myself, starting, for example, when Fox News anchor Rick Fulbaum brought on attorney Tom Kenneth to misquote the First Amendment and mischaracterize its spirit in this clip. That, that's usually, you know, the, the position the courts will take in these situations is that, hey, are we treating anybody differently? Is everybody being treated the same or is one group being discriminated against? You know, it's unfortunate that this is the result because everybody turns towards the First Amendment and the Establishment Clause. Right. But remember, what the Establishment clause, sa clause says is that the government shall make no law establishing a religion, comma, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And here you have a, a group that's been doing this for many, many years, and now they can't do it because a group of atheists have, you know, went and co-opted all the permits for this display. And, you know, it's really not what, what the spirit of religious freedom in this country is all about. Hmm, no, the spirit of the First Amendment should include treating all religious beliefs and lack of religious belief equally, which this lawyer on Fox News might know if he could accurately quote the Establishment Clause, because, as I showed in my 2010 video, Is National Prayer Day Constitutional?, the Constitutional Convention that adopted the First Amendment rejected the phrase no law establishing religion for the much broader no law respecting an establishment of religion, which the primary author of the First Amendment explained as meaning the Constitution forbids anything like an establishment of religion, which would include showing preference for religion over non-religion, but preference for religion is exactly what this lawyer on Fox News was advocating for using the total mischaracterization of the facts of the case you can see here. They may have some appellate rights. I mean, you know, one of the, the interesting arguments you might be able to make here, I don't, know how, I don't know how far it would go legally, is that the atheists are kind of monopolizing this process, and it's not a fair process because they're going in, they're co-opting yes. all the permits. Of course, that's a total misrepresentation of the process, which was completely fair because the 21 spots for displays in Palisades Park were, quote, allocated on a first-come, first-served basis regardless of the content of any displays or the applicant's identity, unquote. And when too many applicants applied at the same time, the spots were assigned by random lottery. But the real misinformation came not from this criminal defense attorney Fox News found for bad spin on Thanksgiving, but from the lawyers who regularly contribute to the legal misinformation broadcast on Fox, like the Is It Legal team on Fox News' highest rated program, The O'Reilly Factor, where Bill O'Reilly brought on attorneys Lise Wheel and Kimberly Guilfoyle with Gilfoyle and Bill O'Reilly seriously mischaracterizing the facts 
to try to make the Christians look better in this clip. You've got a couple of groups here that have aligned together. You have the Santa Monica Police Department's Association and the Nativity Scene Committee who are trying to keep this nativity scene open. So they filed suit for 53 years. Years. Saying what? Right. They're saying, let us put up our display. This is infringing our rights. We're not trying to say someone else shouldn't put up a display, but why are we being. So they're actually yeah. suing the Santa Monica City Council, to keep, saying you can't keep us out of there because we'll, we'll have the atheist stuff. We're not objecting to that. Exactly. They <laughs> no, exactly wrong. Claiming the Christians wanted the nativity scenes and the atheist displays all back up is completely wrong, and none of the over a dozen Fox News stories I watch covering this case ever inform viewers that the Christians who filed the case are not asking for equal treatment, but preferential treatment, because the Christian plaintiff in this case, quote, actually does not want the city to revert to the combined first come, first serve, and lottery system that existed in 2010 and 2011. Instead, plaintiff seeks to force the city to restrict winter display permit applications to applicants desirous of celebrating the seasonal holidays and to deny applications that violate such an objective, unquote. So the Christians are suing the city of Santa Monica asking the city to violate the important First Amendment principle of content neutrality by giving a preference to some displays based on their message, which is why the judge ruled that the Christian plaintiff, quote, seeks relief that the court cannot grant to permit the city to implement a system that enables it to approve or deny applications for displays based on content and viewpoint, unquote. But instead of explaining how the Christian lawsuit violated that important First Amendment principle of content neutrality, O'Reilly and his Fox News legal analysts went on to just ridicule content neutrality, as you can see in this clip. The judge said yesterday, yeah. the judge said, look, as long as you city council ban everything, any seasonal display, then that's so, okay. So we, let's, what, the city council then, and by the way, this is going to be uh, further heard on December 3rd, city council could ban Christmas caroling then. Mm -hmm. Yes. You could say you can't Christmas carol. Absolutely. We'll arrest Anything you if you do. Public place. That's it's not paralyzed. America. That's not freedom of speech. That's not but right. But as long, uh, the First Amendment, as long as they ban everything legal. So Okay, legally. so in Santa Monica, we're banning everything. Well, you can't that has speak. To do with and this was a, a scene that had been displayed for 60 years. I mean, it's, it's very sad. Okay. It is sad. But I now, not only is it pretty one sided for everyone in the so called no spin zone to agree the outcome of the case was sad, but Bill O'Reilly's claim that the city could ban all Christmas caroling is also wrong and wouldn't even be content neutral, never mind being narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest and not leaving open ample alternative channels of communication, which are other requirements for a reasonable time, place, and manner restriction in constitutional law that the Fox News legal analysts never explained, and those lawyers on the O'Reilly factor weren't the only Fox News legal analysts butchering important First Amendment principles, because that same week, Fox & Friends host Steve Ducey brought on another of Fox News' legal analyst, Peter Johnson Jr., who completely misapplied the concept of a heckler's veto to this case, as you can see here. Apparently the atheist, a fellow by the name of uh, Damon Vix and nine friends wound up, see they've got 21 booths there and they're, you know, little displays like that. Of the 21 booths, apparently the atheist and his friends got 18 of them and they would put anti-Christian messages in there and so they just decided, you know what, it's not worth the trouble. And, and put up signs like that, what myths uh, do you see? And then there's Jesus and the devil and, 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 and like that. But. Um, What's going to happen is Santa Monica appears to have succumbed to what's called the heckler's veto. That's right. Meaning that if you heckle something long enough, you can remove from the public square other people who do, in fact, have a right um, to have this kind of, 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 of scene. <laughs> other people who do have a right? Peter Johnson Jr.'s analysis there was based on the totally false premise that those displaying the nativity scene are the only ones with the right to speak, and atheists are somehow just in the audience as hecklers, but as the federal judge in this case wrote, quote, This case does not fit within the concept of a heckler's veto because it involves competing speech rights, not suppression of a message because of the audience's reaction to it. Those who opposed plaintiff's displays, the claimed hecklers, also applied for spaces to erect winter displays, and the city was constitutionally obligated to treat those applications equally to plaintiffs, even if they resulted in opposition messages." Unquote. So Peter Johnson Jr.'s application of the heckler's veto to this case was totally bogus spin, like so much of what passes for legal analysis in Fox News War and Christmas stories, but maybe the worst misrepresentation from a Fox News TV lawyer came from 
radio host, lawyer, and Fox News contributor Laura Ingram, who came on Fox and Friends later that same day and not only failed to point out the Christians in this case were suing to get an unelected judge to overturn the decision of the elected city council, but she actually turned the facts around and claimed the atheists were suing, as you can see in this clip. This guy's name is Damon. I keep calling him Damien, but Damon <laughs> Vicks uh, is the e atheist who first uh, right. filed this lawsuit, right? Well, Damien is not just is. content with not believing. There he is, so lovely. Not just content with not believing. He wants to make a pain in the backside of himself uh, and, and annoy and, and enrage and uh, tr trample on the rights of every other uh, person who happens to be a Christian out there on, uh, you know, at Christmas yeah. time. And I, I don't think it's good for his movement. I think people kind of just think he's a pain. And yeah, I guess continues. he considers this a big victory. Uh, and in case you think Laura Ingram's false claim that the atheist filed the lawsuit was just a moment of misspeaking, she repeated it again a minute later here. This case is a lot like the capital uh, cases for the death penalty, right. where they just overwhelm the city or the state with all these all right. lawsuits. So the state just says, Back forget down. it, we're not going to do this all anymore. Right. <laughs> so I guess blaming atheists for excessive litigiousness in a case where the Christians actually filed the lawsuit is just icing on the cake of lies, misrepresentations, and bad legal analysis that always seem to be at the heart of these Fox News war and Christmas stories that so often seem to boil down to an argument that Christians are being persecuted when they just have to abide by the same rules as everyone else, I think. But I want to know what you think. Did Fox News' legal analysts misrepresent the facts and the law in this case to make the Christians seem persecuted for just having to follow the same rules as everyone else? And regarding the whole war on Christmas idea, which word better describes the status of Christmas in December in the United States? Persecuted or omnipresent? I YouTube, you decide.